Welcome to the one year anniversary screening of Caleb and the Perfect Order of Things. What you're gonna be seeing today is just a version of the film with some commentary done by myself as well as Caleb Saran, the subject of the documentary. If you're familiar with Caleb and the story that he's gone through and if you're familiar with this project, you already know the story, you followed the short documentary through its run through the film festival circuit, and you kind of know what to expect. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film once again with some commentary. Um, hopefully you find some of these stories and uh, reflections amusing, insightful, and entertaining. We hadn't planned to do something like this together, um, and this isn't something that I normally do, but I wanted to kind of reminisce with Caleb um, and reflect on kind of the experiences of making the film and what led to certain creative decisions. And I really wanted to address you, the audience. If you didn't react the way you did in the beginning, I wouldn't have submitted to nearly as many festivals because festivals cost money. <laughs> and it's because of you. It's because of the way you reacted to the film um, and your kind words and your warm reception to it. I just can't thank you enough for all the support that you've given the film. It's meant the world to me and Caleb that this film has gotten so much exposure and been met with such a warm reception from everyone who's seen it. Everyone's been affected by it in some way or another, and this could not have been possible without your support. So thank you so much for supporting the film once again. Welcome to the commentary cut of Caleb and the Perfect Order of Things. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am Tyson Huntsaker, the director and producer of this short documentary. And joining me today is Caleb Saran, the myth, the man, the legend. Uh, and of course, the, the subject of the documentary. And if you didn't know, the composer who wrote all of the original music for the film, too. So thanks so much for, for doing this with me, Caleb. Oh, of course, it's my pleasure. This is an awesome, awesome opportunity. Just really, really happy we get to do this. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to talk about uh, some, some stories and experiences that we had while, while putting this together. Yeah, me and Caleb are gonna kind of give a little bit of commentary. We'll kind of share some, some comments or some little, I guess, trivia as we go through the film. Um, and then there will be a couple times where maybe we'll pause it for a moment, share a story or something, reminisce, and then um, then just keep on going with the film. Um, and it'll be pretty informal, as you can probably already tell, this is not scripted <laughs> at all. It's not edited. We didn't rehearse this. This is just kind of just kind of a little improv thing um, me and Caleb are doing um, just to kind of relive all of these awesome experiences that we had of of making this thing yeah yeah and i just want to add that uh there are a lot of stories um that that weren't shared uh in the final cut and and a lot of uh cool experiences that that happened uh while we made you know while we worked on this um i i say we it was you know totally your creation and your your masterpiece that you put together but I'm I am really glad that I got to share my story and and be a part of this and uh, there were just some really really cool experiences that, uh, that happened while we while we worked on this so yeah and kind of before we start too I'll just like add one more thing to that the the making of this film was eerily smooth I mean, if you've worked in any kind of like short film or short documentary or commercial or any kind of film industry related project, you know that nothing goes as you planned or expected. Oh, and yeah. while this film didn't necessarily go the way I envisioned in a way that like, you know, I expected certain things to happen, it was the smoothest project I've ever done. It was a wow. complete, like everything just, it, it wasn't like easy. It was just everything, the stars aligned and everything just fell into place at the perfect time. And it just, when you look back with the, that 2020 hindsight vision, you're just like, wow, that's really eerie how it was <laughs> so smooth, almost like this meant to be thing. And I don't well, know. Oh. I, think, I think you're totally right. It was, it was meant to be. Um, and, and I noticed that while composing the music, it just seemed to flow and I remember meeting with you and going through every moment and playing out the music and we're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, this is great. Yeah. Yes, this is totally what it needs to be. And we just seemed to feel it. We just felt what it needed to be and, yeah. and made it happen. So that was really cool. Yeah, super seamless to like flow into this creative, creative flow. And it just like, it just happened so quickly yeah. that, yeah, it was kind of this lightning in a bottle experience that, yeah, we won't forget. Yeah. So, all right, enough chitter chatter for me. Let's just play this film. <laughs> Let's play this movie and we'll get chatting. Yeah, sounds great. I felt like I needed this perfect order. I felt like it needed to be just right. I kind of was trapped in that world for a few years. Even though I really enjoyed art, I just didn't know what was available to me. I didn't realize what I was capable of either. Because even after years of doing art and having people say, wow, you're such a great artist, I never thought of myself as a creative person because I I'm going to just like quickly pause it because I, I have just, a quick little comment. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. I was going to be like, okay, I was just going to hold out till the end of the intro and then be like, Tyson, you got to stop yeah, yeah, it because yeah. I've got stuff to share already. I think, I think a quick little piece of trivia that probably no one knows about is I think the assumption when we see the interview is that these are all your paintings, but actually they're not. Is, isn't that right? Right. You know, I'm going to show you all of these paintings, none of which are mine, <laughs> but I will tell you whose they are in just a second. I mean, these are in my dining room and they all belong to one person. They were all created by one person and that's my wife, Daniela. She created all of these gorgeous paintings. And, uh, you know, it's really incredible because when we started dating, I had just recently started to teach paint nights and, and it had just been a few months of teaching paint nights. And I have to say, as crazy as it is, I had been drawing and doing art for so long. And I talk about it in the film, uh, in this world of black and white. Well, I decided to, that I wanted to do painting. I wanted to explore a world of color well I didn't get that I didn't take that chance until somebody invited me to teach a paint night and literally just months before meeting her before meeting Daniela I got the chance to teach my my first paint night and that was the first night the first or first time that I'd ever put a brush to a canvas is the first time I painted was when I taught my first paint night. Now I had like tried some other things I had explored with like a little bit of watercolor here or there, or, you know, some little things just dabbled, but actually painting on canvas and completing a painting. Yeah, that it was the first time. It was the first time. And so it's just really crazy. And so just months before that, I had, I had begun my painting journey. Um, and, and then I got to share that journey with my wife when we went on a date and she painted this painting of the Northern Lights here. And that was her first painting ever. And now look what she's done over just a few years, just a few years. And she's, she's got um, nearly 60 paintings on on the walls in this room. It's just mind blowing to me, so. Yeah, so one of the unsung heroes of the film is Daniela who- Oh, for many reasons. Yeah, yeah, and for <laughs> one of them is this background of this interview um, is her work, so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay. good stuff. Really cool. Now I want to share, <laughs> there's so much to share, it's so great. Yeah. And uh, um, I hope everyone uh, is, is up for the, the ride here because <laughs> there's a lot to share but um that's why we're doing this yeah it's awesome so um that theme that you that you hear at the very beginning it's this kind of mysterious scale kind of thing and uh i really love it and 
and it's been that that theme has been very important to me, very special to me for a long time. And I'm just so glad that we could use that theme in in this video. Um, you know, and it's amazing because that theme was actually written years and years and years ago by my dad. In fact, it could have been written, I'm not sure when it was, but it could have been written before I was born. But that theme was one of the first things he ever taught me on the piano. And he is also the one who taught me to draw and to love art. He's the one that really sparked that interest in art. And he sparked that interest in art um, in my brother as well, for my brother. And, and, and I talk about him in the, in the video as well. And so it's just really cool. I mean, my dad's very special to me and he's taught me so much. And so I was really glad that I could incorporate one of his themes into, into the film. And um, so I just wanted to make sure that people knew that, you know, that was, that was his theme. And, and so um, it's just cool that he was the inspiration for a lot of things in my life. Um, and he's the inspiration for me being able to cope with uh, the adversity that I ended up facing. Um, and so just props to him. <laughs> nice. Cool. I was stuck in a black and white world. And this probably is a good time to mention if you actually haven't seen the film, Oh, go, go watch it. Go watch then it. Watch this yeah, clip. that's the don't yeah, start. You've got to watch it. No, no, because we're going to be like talking over stuff. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be you won't be able to away. get a full scope of the story. So. Oh, absolutely. And we don't want to be, you know, giving away everything, you know, before it happens. Brother, and stuff. Ian, yeah. He was always drawing constantly. These are his real drawings. And I wanted to be like through him. a box of so his sketches. I We've kept pick up a as many sketches as we could of his away as well, along with him. And I think that's my earliest memory of anything related to art. We were always drawing, always drawing. It was so cool. So this piece is uh, a portrait of a lady who passed away after a battle. This was a lot of fun being in your studio, going through all these. So this was commissioned by it's, 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 it's not even that much time in the film, but it's like, to... we spent hours just talking about all these, all these pictures. Yeah, I know. So, so many, so many right. stories that I got to share. It was really fun because there's a story behind each piece of artwork. Yeah. It really is. There's a story behind each piece and it has special uh, significance and, um, and I learned something through the process of creating it, whether that was something like a life lesson or something emotional or just something art related, like in terms of technique or, or, you know, Hey, I learned about how to improve the backgrounds, or I learned how to improve shadows in this way or proportions or something. Um, it's just like every portrait that I did and every piece of artwork just helped me grow so much. And, and it was so cool because the artwork that I was doing for people wasn't just, here's a random, you know, painting of a piece of fruit or something, although those can be great, you know, they can be very beautiful and, and uh, contribute to peace and things like that. Those, those can be great, but um, there was just a very special connection with the artwork and the person because uh, the person that I was creating it for, because it was of their loved ones, it was, a, it was a, representation of the loved one that had passed away. And that was the majority of the projects I was doing because people would see, oh, you know, oh, Caleb did a portrait of so-and-so who lost their father. And, and I just lost, you know, I just lost a loved one. And so I, I want to go, have, I want to go have Caleb do a portrait for me as well. And so it just became a snowball effect. And, and I kept getting these, these commissions because people would share it with their friends and, and I would share on social media and I would talk to people and, and share my portfolio and people would see, wow, you know, he does these portraits of, of, of people who have passed away. And, and so it just became this big thing that, that I did. And so every, every piece that I worked on, it was just very special feeling a connection and, and hoping that the artwork would really, um, bring healing and hope and and some comfort to to those people who had been grieving 
yeah tons of stories with all of them i mean in the film we probably see maybe three or four but mm-hmm. you and i went through like hundreds probably we went through a ton we went, we went through, through some of my oldest sketches yeah we went right to the beginning <laughs> yeah i showed you my very first portrait that i did that my dad sat me down and said okay draw me draw what you see and he he knelt down in front of me i was sitting on the couch and he knelt down on the floor in front of me and just said draw my face draw what you see not what you think you see and that was so so crucial because that that was the key to me being able to draw um somebody's likeness and have it really look like them and feel like them to capture their essence I needed to not just draw a symbol of an eye like people do, you know, the little lemon shape or the football shape with some lines and you know what I mean? I do. You know, he taught me to really look harder. It's like Rafiki in Lion King, right? When he goes, look hard, right? Yeah. And and Simba's looking into the pool and stuff. It it was amazing because I was like, oh yeah. I can actually train my eye to see things that I never noticed before. Uh, So anyway, cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The art that I enjoy doing most is art that brings healing. I love the music everywhere. You know, that's so funny. Thank you for saying that, by the way. (laughs) You know what I was thinking was, I love the sound effects of (laughs) of me shaving the, you know, the pencil. I think that's so funny that you were thinking of the music. And uh, yeah. thinking of the, of the we're each thinking shades. about each other's different you know <laughs> contributions yeah. that actually that sound effect was that i actually spent way too much time than i should have trying to sync that up to make that feel right it's wow just, well it, it turned out great yeah. and you know that bob ross is is successful not because his paintings are awesome although they are but because of his sound effects people talk about that all the time Time when he waxed the heck or the devil oh, yeah. what does he say just beat the devil out of it you know when he hits that brush against the bar or or he you know brushes in that sky and stuff and everybody's just like most relaxing sound <laughs> painting you know so i was just like so glad that you captured those those uh, pencil yeah. shavings and or digging through the pencils and stuff that's fun yeah sound design part of the experience just totally has kind of organically come about uh, because of my my family story and my experiences of losing loved ones. On December 24th, 2006. That actually was a cool thing. I just wanted to quickly say like yeah. um, in, in this version, um, um, when it goes black like that, I have this this kind of the sound effect of a of whooshing wind, mm-hmm. and I in the edit kind of technically crafted it to come out from the left channel, come in through the center, and out the right channel, mm, so which cool. which so was cool. a thing that not a lot of people like ever listened to. But when I listened to it in the theater, it had the exact effect that I had like wow. envisioned. I was like, oh yes, yeah, oh. just just a cool moment. So oh man, so cool. Intersection yeah. Murray, as soon as we got the green light. It's a different experience my, in the theater. My mom who was driving, uh, she pressed on the gas and in an instant we were blindsided by a drunk driver. Man, everything, everything changed. It's like, how can you, how can you see those pictures and not I mean, even after 15 years, you know what I mean? And yeah. having seen Everything those pictures so many times before, it's just like, no it just existed. always blows me away. I remember and being, being there at the intersection uh, that day was a really special thing, uh, Tyson. So thank you for, for being willing to do that, to go out there and, and record it. Because I, I felt like it was important for us to really be there where it happened. And it was... Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's sacred ground, you know, it's, it's a special place. It's, it's hard. It's hard to be there, of course, when something so terrible happened and, and, and maybe people think, well, why would it be sacred ground? You, you should be a place that you want to avoid. Right. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a place that's hard to, hard to go to, but um, 
you know, my life changed there in that moment. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was, you know, horrible what happened, but, um, but I feel like somehow that it's like going there helps bring healing, you know, kind of going there and accepting it. And, and uh, I don't want to say embracing it because it's, it's, it's not something that you necessarily embrace, right? It's, it's something that's, it's, it's tragic. It's so hard, but being able to accept it and to, to acknowledge that it happened and say, yes, that was so hard and so horrible, but look at where I am now and look what I've learned from it and, and look at the blessings that I have. Uh, it's really, it's really special to, to go back there. Yeah. For any of you that don't know this, you know, th this was the intersection that that accident took place and going here to film a little bit of your reaction was Caleb's idea. And he's, and, and it kind of came up pretty spontaneously, if I remember right, of, Hey, yeah. what if we were to go do this? This might, this might add a little something and, you know, might be a, a good addition to it. And I, I, of course was like, Oh yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> and, and we, yeah, we went there and, you know, um, I also remember like, we didn't really talk much. I just kind of was like, yeah, let's just go for a walk. Let's just kind of do this and just, just chill, think, reflect a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, and like, th this was all natural. None of this, as I recall, was really directed. Mm -hmm. This was just, uh, yeah, th this was just very yeah. candid. And yeah. uh, that's, that's kind of the magic of documentary filmmaking is you're able to catch very candid uh, moments like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely just an amazing time to just think. And you, as soon as I pull up to that intersection, it's just like a wave of emotion, right? And just, just wow. It's like my whole, it's just like everything stops. Everything around me, all of the noise, it just goes away. There could be a ton of cars passing by. There could be people talking. There could be, you know, so much going on and yet it just feels silent and yeah. and it just it was just a really amazing moment to to ponder and just to reflect so although somebody drove drove by in the middle of us filming this and whistled and i was i have to say that was the first time that i've ever been whistled at and probably the last <laughs> unless yeah. unless unless they were whistling at you but I, don't uh, know. That, well, I thought maybe they were just making a sound because they saw it's just some big honking camera I was holding and they were like, I'm on TV. But oh, that's know, probably what that's probably maybe maybe I'm being way too, uh, you know, egotistical they, thinking they that they were whistling whistled. at me. Yeah. Or yeah, like, I don't know. I, I have no <laughs> idea. But I was just like, what? It's just it's just a camera. I remember them making Haven't some noise. A camera? <laughs> that's really funny. Maybe in my mind they whistled because I I wanted to you know I hoped that you know that yeah. that was what was happening. Yeah. No, they probably like, oh, were. I'm in a leather jacket, so I look cool now. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, they probably <laughs> were. I mean, everyone watching. I mean, look at the jacket. Come on. Come on. I'm in a lot of pain, but I don't have any idea what happened. That jacket is pretty sweet. People, what happened? Oh my gosh. On. And also, that's from my wife, so gonna be she's okay. also you know, the reason for everything good in my life. So. None of them told The me. unsung hero. Yeah. It wasn't until the 25th of December, Christmas Day, I'm 12 yeah, years old. It still blows me I'm away that it was Christmas Day. Ugh. My dad Man. stepped into my hospital room. Somehow yeah. I just knew, even though everyone said everything was going to be okay, I knew that not everything was okay. I could see how hard it was for him to tell me. First thing I said was, what about mom? He looked at me and said, she didn't make it. And I asked him, what about Ian and Julie? And he, he said they didn't make it either. We wanted to 
make sure that we were really slowing down at this part of the film, obviously for, you know, obvious reasons, but really take our time in the edit, really slow it down and let people have a chance to actually digest and process all of these little, these little moments, Mm -hmm. Um, because it's a, as, especially as I looked at other people's reaction in theaters too, Mm -hmm. there's not, you know, you could easily tell the story and then throw the bomb at people Mm -hmm. and it kind of hits them at once. But the way we did it here was not one bomb. It's several, you know, chunks of your heart being chipped away one at a time. And that was, um, I felt like that approach was important for um, and appropriate for what we were trying to go for here. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you'll notice in the music as well, the music slows so much there. And um, yeah, I just remember being in the in the hospital room um, and and my dad said that a, a tear, just one tear, and I, and I do remember that just one tear uh, fell down my, my face. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's when I told him that we were still family, you know, and I, I really felt that. I really felt that in that moment, like it was such a, such a a crazy moment to just be like, wait, what? Like they're, they're gone, you know, but it's like, I knew that something had happened. So it's almost like, I don't know if I was preparing myself or what. I mean, I was only 12 years old and I, and I, everything was so hazy and just, you know, everything was just a blur but I knew that something had happened and I knew that if the nurses wouldn't tell me what was going on, that, that something had to be up. And, and I just knew, I mean, having my dad sit down and just say, you know, it, it just his countenance, everything about it was just like, okay, I know, some, I know that something's up. So I just had to kind of brace myself. And but it was amazing because just this overwhelming feeling of peace came over me as he was telling me what had happened. And that blew me away, right? Because something so devastating had happened. And yet I, I just, I, I was blessed to have this just feeling of peace, like this comfort and this feeling just that everything was going to be okay somehow, some way. And, and uh, after he told me, I did spend a lot of time I asked if I could just be alone for a little bit to, to think and just process, right. Yeah, just like course. you kind of how you created that moment for, for the audience. And I just needed that time to, to think. And, and I remember thinking in the hospital room, wow, it's so, everyone is so sad about what had happened, what had happened. And, and, and yet I, I thought, you know what though, this is, this is horrible, but you know, what's something good, kind of the silver lining about this um, is that my mom had already lost or my parents had already lost five children before this accident happened. There were two that were born prematurely and died the day they were born. They were twins. And three of my siblings, all born at different times, they were all separate births. They, all three developed a similar brain tumor. And they died under the age of two, all, all three of them. They didn't make it past two years old. And, and so my mom had been through so much already. She had experienced so much grief. And I thought, you know, it was, it was a merciful thing that, that she didn't have to bear losing another child in this accident. And I thought, you know, what better Christmas gift could somebody receive than to be reunited with, with five of her children? You know, and it's it's my personal belief that that we'll see each other again and and I, I believe in in a life after this life and and so I I thought to myself you know I really think that she is able to see them 
to see those kids that that she had and and always wanted to to be with to to snuggle and to kiss and to hold and to teach and to see them grow up and she never got that and and she carried that throughout her life and so it's just a, a in my mind it, it made sense like hey you know what like it really stinks that we have to to live life without them but how great is it that they get to be together you know that my mom and and, and seven of her kids get to be together and and we just got to be patient until you know it's our time to to all be together at some point we had gone through all of the visits from from friends and family we had gone through the funeral we had gone through just the overwhelming influx of love and then there came a time when things just started to get kind of quiet and i remember i drew a picture of my little sister juliana It really set the tone for my artistic journey. I feel like the project. You got some stories? Uh, you know, maybe you could tell that there was, you know, <laughs> the, wheel, the wheels were turning. Yeah. Um, I, I just uh, wanted to say, first of all, I love that, that, that uh, the way you cut that with the drawing and then fading to the photograph of her. Uh, it's that was really really special that was really cool um, but also I just remember that day that uh, that I drew that and that my my dad had gone to the store with my sister Clarissa right so my sister Clarissa was the only um, other child um, in my family that survived and and we we're we were really really close and and uh, and we we stay connected now and it's it's just awesome um we get to see each other um every once in a while and it's it's just awesome but um yeah i remember my dad and and my sister um going to the store to return the gifts that they had that we had purchased for the family members who passed away that christmas we had prepped you know and gone the whole month of december uh anticipating gift giving and receiving and and it was just crazy to now be a week about a week you know or two after the accident um it might have been more maybe three weeks or so and my dad's returning the things that you know they literally had to unwrap things and to take them back to the store and that was just heartbreaking so heartbreaking and um, uh, in fact, he was about to take Ian's keyboard that they had purchased for him because he loved to play the piano. He was an incredible composer, even at the age of 15, when he passed away, just an amazing uh, composer who had written so many songs. And so he was into art and music, just like me, um, as well as acting. And, and so I got a lot of inspiration from him as well as my dad. Um, but he wanted that keyboard and so we got it for him for Christmas uh, where my parents did and and so when he when my dad unwrapped it and was about to take it back I begged him to let me keep it and he was kind of hesitant um, you know and it's a little pricey and and but I said I want to be able to play the piano like Ian did and I, I want to have that chance to develop my music skills and this keyboard would help me to do that. And so he let me keep it. And that's the same keyboard that's sitting in the next room over and the same same keyboard that I composed the music for this documentary on. Full circle. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Crazy. Yeah. That I have worked on, the art that I've created has definitely brought hope and healing to other people who have been in a similar situation as me. I feel a special connection with people who have lost love. That's some of my favorite stuff we shot was in your members. studio. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like. Yeah. And to me, that's enough. Yeah, that was a really, really cool. 
Um, cool experience. Um, so I got that I really hot in I there. Help. I don't open up some windows because <laughs> I had lights. I had a lot yep, of lights. Tons there, of lights, so. yeah. People who it's really uh, hot. And I do that for the families who have lost those loved ones. It's it's almost like kind of restoring a bit of that person and and I don't know, kind of immortalizing them. I just hear it. Also shot at uh, Rockwell Charter High School. One of the Thank you to them I for was... letting me come and so, shoot in their yeah. classroom. Yeah, yeah. It was also because kind of an underlying anxiety. I felt like I now you'll hear that theme again the from the beginning, like the, the, the theme that was right. at the beginning that my dad wrote. And we're putting that back in um, to kind of preface um, a change and uh, a paradigm shift. And so that, that theme is kind of representing the black and white world that I lived in. And that that world, even though it was art and I and I feel like I did a, a great job with the art that I produced and I enjoyed it and, uh, and people liked it. Um, yeah, look at this thing. Oh, well, thank you. It's yeah, amazing. that's Mer Meryl Osmond, the, the singer. Um, I got to give that to him personally. And last I heard, it's hanging in his living room. So it's really fun. Um, and, and he signed a, a print for me. And uh, I got to give him the original, you know. But, um, but yeah, this, this music prefaces that, that black and white world that I, I, or represents that black and white world that I lived in. And, uh, and I just think that that theme, it's, it's just a little bit mysterious, a little bit kind of like, there's a little bit of tension to it, I guess. It's not, it's not this super, you know, there's not that resolution yet. And so that's what we're just trying to build up to with the music and um, trying to make it feel like there's just a little bit of that conflict, right? Just that little bit of like, man, maybe there's something missing um, to, to, my, to my art. Maybe, you know, maybe I need to branch out and try that you know that color because I was I was afraid to paint for the longest time I just thought I can't do it I need I need formal training or something like I thought it was way way harder and way out more out of my reach than it really was yeah we talked a lot about structure throughout this entire project and structure was something that I that I really tried to focus hard on was um a, a, a character journey of sorts Mm -hmm. But it, you know, obviously is nonfiction. It's a documentary based off of, you know, obviously a real story. But yet mm -hmm. there is a, a structure to the change that a character goes through of the person that we know when we start the film versus the person that we know at the end and how they've changed. And yeah. we wanted the music to reflect that in every little bit. We were intentional on how these themes that Caleb was writing was being set up in act one developed in act two and then paid off in act three absolutely in fact every um every part of this of this film um was set to music that was very intentional and very specific to the moment and to what was being said and you know if you could see in my notebook when i was taking notes and on what time we would have it to the second when the music should start what music it was what it should feel like you know what it should sound like and and um but the cool thing about it was that it wasn't forced to be that way it wasn't like we were I don't know it didn't seem too uh manufactured it it's like it just it really flowed and and then as we as we realized wow this is totally working and, and we play it oh that's oh that's so great but let's start that here just a second before or let's let's play that same theme but let's do that a second later or let's just come in you know in this way or let's come in a little bit softer and then build up or whatever it was and and we ended up developing really specific notes for the the final composition and so it's really cool and I hope that as people watch this um, and, and if they go back and watch the, the film again, they can watch it, but, but with a, a more keen ear listening to 
the the themes and and the music and how it develops and tells the story yeah that's kind of what i was what we were saying before was like it it just it was so smooth because i we planned so much and we put so much effort yet it the growth of the project was so organic it was yeah. so natural at every totally turn. anytime we hit a little it seemed like every time we hit a roadblock of any kind, whether it's like, oh, what do we do with the music here? Or how mm -hmm. should we shoot this? Or, you know, where yeah. should we go from here? It's like it was resolved in like five seconds because the ideas <laughs> just came to us and we're like, oh yeah, let's do that. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> it was like, incredible. Right. It blew me away. And I, I remember thinking the whole time, the whole, like throughout the process, like, wow, we work so well together. This is so cool. And, and it was so fun, Tyson, to be able to work with you and to be able to like, feel that confidence that I could suggest something and say, Hey, well, what if we try this? Or what if we try that? Or, or could we, could we capture this? Um, or, you know, and for you to be able to just say, Caleb, just say, just talk, just open up and say whatever you need to say. And you were just so willing to listen. And, and it was so fun that you were interested in what was going on, you know, because as, as an artist, like you want to share everything and you want everybody to think it's so cool. And some people do think it's cool. And some people are like, yeah, cool. Like you drew something nice, you know, but they don't like, they don't understand the, the work that goes into it and, yeah. and why I'm doing it maybe, you know, and, and, and that's fine. Like maybe they just, they connect with different things. Um, but it was so fun, Tyson, to, to do this with you because I could tell you were generally interested in the story and gener and not generally, genuinely um, interested in in uh, just creating this uh, this story um, or this this documentary. And so it was just really cool to bounce ideas. And we there's this the, there was this synergy that was just incredible. That you know you'd give an idea and I'd build off of it, or I'd give an idea and you would build off of it, and you'd be like, "Yeah, that's great. Let's do this and this," and then it just kept building and building to to what it is now. And it's so that's that was really magical, I think. Yeah, it was, and I feel like it just it, it all came together so naturally and well. Probably because I think we were on the same page and we were in sync about what we, um, you know, what our goal was with it. I think we yeah. really had the same objective, even if we we weren't a hundred percent aware of what it would be at the very, very end. We knew what we wanted it to achieve, I think. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I think we just kind of let it live. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it was, it, you know, the problem solving just came very natural and we were able to solve things just quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And isn't it cool that it's become, uh, that it became what, what we hoped it not that we had a clear vision exactly like you said of, of every moment and what it would be like from the get-go but but it we do feel and we do feel that it, it accomplished its purpose and and we hope that it will continue to that people will continue to share this this story and and that and hopefully people can find some hope and healing uh for themselves and through this and that maybe you know, maybe more and more people in the future can connect with it. You know, um, we don't want it to just stop where it's at. You know, it's 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 gotten awards and, and it's had a good reception, but we would love for this to continue. So anybody watching, please share with your family and friends. Do it. <laughs> that was me trying to cope with all of this change. I wanted order. I wanted control over something in my life. Because I've gotten asked several times, me, how long was the interview? And the docs oh, yeah? 10 minutes. That was a way uh -huh. we, could we have over three hours of raw, was getting unedited footage in that picture. Mm -hmm. of just the interview. Everything. Of just that interview of me in front of those paintings, yeah. Yeah. Just that interview, yeah. right? Over three hours, maybe close to four. I feel proud no of more than four, though. Yeah. But I definitely <clears> was limited at that time, even though I really enjoyed art. I just didn't know. Big shout out to Gabby Sunquist who helped me edit the transcript. Either. That saved me hours. For years. I Thank you, Gabby. In case you're watching this. <laughs> That's I awesome. That's really cool. Discovered color. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I made the transcript so I could a new part of me. Kind of structure the film. And oh, that's really cool. It was like 
all of a sudden I, I felt. Okay, speaking of shout outs, thanks again to Jared Dan, who was on set with me and helped me solve numerous lighting problems, including <laughs> something in the background that I was just too preoccupied with something else to like solve. And at a, at a certain point, he was just like, nah, I'm just going to fix it. And then he just would <laughs> fix it. He's like, hey, what do you think? I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks great. Thanks. So, thanks, Jared. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> while we're while we're on that topic of like, you know, filming this interview, um, do you remember how sick I was? And oh, yeah, how my right. voice was just a oh, mess. Yeah. And um, and so I my totally voice, forgot. I don't know if you guys can hear it like with the way the mic is right now compared to how the video is, but but uh, my voice was actually a little bit lower and more raspy sounding. And and I tried to, you know tried to I think talking a bunch kind of helped me get out of that a little bit but remember how bad of a cough I had and so I had to I remember had to pause I was worried. a lot you probably edited a lot of coughs but I had you know my my dad went out and bought me cough drops yeah. and brought them back because I was just dying and and I was like you guys this is not COVID I I got a <laughs> test done I'm not you know I don't have COVID so do you guys still feel comfortable coming in and, and filming this? And I was like, you guys probably just should wear masks. And so you guys were like, yeah, we're okay with it. And you guys came in, you had masks on. And I think I had a mask like in my lap or something. And yeah, I and, think you did. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, when we weren't, when I wasn't answering a question or we weren't rolling, you know, I, I'd put the mask back on because I didn't want to get you guys sick and oh my gosh it was just a mess but I it totally happened when it needed to happen sick. I totally forgot that you were sick that's interesting I yeah my, you my totally throat was were. a mess now I remember and my throat was so itchy I could hardly get anything out so I would I would share a few sentences and then just have to cough and just just yeah. die a little so yeah. oh man I remember I that now so much <laughs> Those brush shots, Learning though, to man, those, go with the flow, I, I like those okay shots. Oh, and this one, that one's just awesome. I in love case that one. any of you are are ha, have seen the film, go back and watch this moment in particular. Caleb synced a particular um, piece, like string of piano notes, as his eyes are going from down to up. It's something straight out of like. Can you rewind good, that like, just a second? <laughs> like Goodfellas, like, like. Oh my gosh. Here we go. So I discovered a new part of me. There's a little high and note, I think. It was like when my eyes go up. I, I felt yeah. free to do so much. You hear the music changing now to something a little bit more happy and and hopeful. Learning to just go with the flow, be okay with whatever happens. That right there, really right there. Oh yeah. Wake up every day and be excited. <laughs> that was fun. About that was fun. Life. It's the little things. And it's the little really things. Hard. Easily amused, I guess. Oh, yeah. well, it's the little things that add a lot of value. Yeah, even if people aren't consciously noticing those things, I, I hope that they have an effect somehow on, on people, right? Yeah. And so many fun memories just thinking about of painting these, you know, just it's fun to see these and go, man, yeah, I remember the process. I remember I just have the experiences about this and, you know, just thinking about the people that they are of, it's just really special. Serious nature of the stuff that I draw a lot of the time, I need to have something humorous or random or just colorful and fun. This always gets With, chuckles in the theater. Yeah, I was just gonna always. say this. I was gonna say I, the exact same thing. <laughs> People always chuckle at that, and and I love it um, I because I'm glad I put it in there, especially oh, yeah. near the end. Yeah. Oh yeah, Every it's great that I have. If I didn't know what it was like to lose a loved one, <laughs> I wouldn't really fully appreciate what it's like to have a loved one.
Tyson, you, you did this this little montage, this this part just beautifully. I just thought it was an incredible way to 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 close out this this story and to to finish the documentary. It's it was really really magical, and and I loved putting the music into it as well, trying to get that feeling of resolution and joy and hope and moving forward and. And that's one of the reasons why here, you'll see, we keep the music going in to the credits. Yeah. We don't change the music. We don't have a finishing note no, at the end of the documentary. The we keep going because I want it to feel like this journey is still going. Mm -hmm. You know, as obviously as a um, as a filmmaker, there's there's so many ways you can do a story. Obviously, like we were just talking about, we can go with a very happy ending, a sad ending. That kind of very much depends on what you want the what you want the audience to feel. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, I I think all kinds of stories are important. I. I I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, we need a happy ending for every story. Like there's a lot of value that I found in generating like some of the most empathy that mm -hmm. a human being is capable of feeling from a film that is just really sad, mm -hmm. you know? But when it came to your story and this one, I, I felt like the, you know, how we wanted people to feel and what we wanted people to take away from this <clears throat> was you can do it um you know the hardships that you hand that you face in your life the the trauma um you know we all have trauma and you know you say it in the documentary you know we we all go through something um you know but and, and your thing that you find healing from doesn't have to be through art but maybe if you watch the documentary and you watch his story maybe you you can just feel that, you know, you're not alone in dealing with trauma. Um, you know, like while you're 100% valid in your experiences, there's also so many people who also go through so many difficult things and you're mm -hmm. not alone and yeah. there, there is hope. Mm -hmm. You can get to that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, just keep hoping. Be relentless yeah. with your hope and, you know, stick to it, get help, Yeah. you know, gather your support system of loved ones and, and find something that you, yeah, fi find, something, say, find that, something you, that you love to do or something that can help you yeah. uh, find that, that peace and that, that healing. Yeah, that speaks to you and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, speaks your language and, you know, things get better. Things get yeah. better over time, um, you know, so yeah, that's, and I want, that's what and we I want to go for. Yeah, and I want to add that, you know, if you find something that you love, um, you know, that's, that's going to help you heal. But even more so, if you can find something you love that contributes, you um, light or goodness or or joy to to other people's lives it's going to go so much further for you um as the person contributing those good things you're going to find so much more healing as you see other people heal as a result of your efforts yeah just just want to thank all you guys for being a part of my life yeah we couldn't we couldn't have you know, done this without you, all the people no who supported it. And yeah. uh, especially like we said earlier in the thing, our unsung heroes, which usually take the form of our spouses. Yes. You know, so uh, our wives our did, wives. did amazing things for us uh, during this process. Right. Yes. I mean, Daniela taking care of our kids and uh, you know, that was, I guess it was just Addie at the time. Right. But taking care of Addie and, and uh you know, making sure that, that everything worked and, and then your wife that was amazingly supportive and, and helping with your daughter and, you know, supporting you during late nights of editing and, you know, what, what have you, and just, 
no one will truly know the depths that uh that my wife uh, supported me and sacrificed except her Mm -hmm. not just with you know the the shooting but the editing the you know the 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 repetitive conversations that i would have with her and she's like you've already talked about this (laughs) no i just need a springboard so you uh you significant others um of artists you are the uh you are you are the backbone yeah of these projects that we get to make so um you know we share yes. this with you. Thank you again so much, guys. Thanks, Caleb, for joining me. Is there oh, last? Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been so much fun. Are oh, there any? So uh, are there any uh, last um, plugs you want to uh, <laughs> you want to uh, throw throw near the people? Well, you know, I'll give you a bit of advice, and then uh, I'll share a little bit about uh, just what's what's coming in the near future. Um, I just want to share with you guys seriously that you can absolutely do it. Whatever it is that you are hoping for, that you're yearning for, that you're uh, really seeking after, you can absolutely achieve it. You can absolutely do it. I I have always wanted to be an artist and, um, you know, it's, it's been a struggle and there've been lots of hurdles and lots of uh, hard things. Um, lots of discouragement and lots of anxiety and depression and stuff that has just been really hard. But I know that everyone goes through something that's hard. And, and I personally believe that, uh, that we just need to hold on to hope and, and just try to surround ourselves with, with good things, positive things, and try to keep those positive words in our minds that we can do it, that it's going to be okay. Even if it's hard right now, things will be okay. And, and eventually things will work out. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know when, don't know, you know, lots of things. I don't know. Um, but it will work out and you are capable of doing much more amazing things than you realize. And, uh, that's, that's all I wanted to say there, but then I, you know, if you're talking about plugs, you know, um, I do, I do, I do want to say, um, that I really, uh, I I get to enjoy uh, owning a business where I teach uh, total beginners to paint and draw. And right now I get to teach uh, art courses to uh, to kids and teenagers and as well as uh, paint nights for for adults. And and I just, I've been able to teach lots of uh, of fun classes and uh, and so I just hope that you guys will check it out. Uh, paintwithcaleb.com um, is, uh, is the site where you can uh, see the, the different things that I offer. I offer uh, painting kits that you can do from home with video tutorials and things like that. Um, but also I do have another website where I, uh, uh, I show my commissioned work um, and where you can commission a painting from me if you're interested. Um, so that's calebsaran.com, C-A-L-E-B-C-E-R-A-N.com. And you can see all of my work there, uh, the different paintings and drawings that I've done uh, throughout my, my life. And, uh, and you can send a request and, uh, and then we'll do a little chat and, and work out the details so we can get you an amazing painting, so. Nice, awesome. Yeah, follow Caleb's career and all of his projects. Uh, go follow him on social media, all that jazz. And know. go follow Tyson. Yeah. Go follow I mean, I'll, Tyson. I'll, I'll, I'll plug myself too. Do it. Yeah, go, do it. Go follow. Go. Or go follow. Go follow Caleb Saran Arts, <laughs> you know, Instagram, Facebook, um, any other social media channels. Um, and I am Hunsaker Media. So you can find me at hunsakermedia.com uh, doing all things filmmaking and video production related um anything you can imagine when it comes to creating uh filmmaking or video content or even photography um i'm just getting my hands kind of in everything right now um i am working on a short film right now that is in the casting process which i believe i I saw that that's really cool yeah this is going to be a fun one um because uh it looks like i could be doing a quick rewrite uh which i'm very excited for because this just catapulted the script into a very different place that excites me Mm, so um that's going to be filming in april um and that's probably going to be done post-production uh probably later this summer 
thanks again, everyone, for making it through this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to watch the whole film with no interruptions, go watch it. It's only about 11 minutes long. Uh, but if you'd like to watch the commentary cut and just kind of hang out with us, hear some stories, um, yeah, come and watch this. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, make sure to follow uh, both of us um, in both of our artistic careers. Go follow Caleb Saran and all of his incredible art projects. He has come down the pipeline. He's always creating awesome stuff. Um, go follow him on social media. You can follow me, Hun Sacred Media, on social media. I'm uh, going Go absolutely crazy with social media right now, trying to um, just put everything I create out there. Um, and it's been a lot of fun uh, to get a lot more reach uh, recently. So um, thanks again for joining us. Love you guys. See ya.